Hey everyone. Yeah, so this is Krista and we are just waiting for people to log on and we are going to be taking your comments and questions. Um, I don't know anything about bugs, trees. I have some bugs. <laughs> Yes. Um, we were just I was just talking to her about my apple tree while ago that I have some spots on so it's probably a fungus among us she said so um, so yeah we're gonna talk about um, some different common stuff and you brought some little bugs and that's not one I of know. them I hope that's not one of them yeah <laughs> it might be that's fine it won't eat that much so you brought some friends I did um, one bug that we are seeing a lot of this year in our area is the Japanese beetle and it's kind of a pretty little bug, I guess, if you want to call it that. It looks like iridescent. It is iridescent. I'm going to try to get it out here um, on this flower sample so you can see it if he cooperates. Um, so the Japanese beetles have um, been very numerous this year. I want to get it out so you can see it. See, it's kind of an iridescent color. It's characteristic is it has white... Um, white spots along its backside towards oh, yeah. the wing so that's one easy way to identify it but um the Jap yeah <laughs> the japanese beetle will actually feed on the flower it will feed on the leaves um okay, i brought a sample of a rose Ooh. that the japanese beetle has worked on look at all and that. as you can see it it kind of skeletalizes or it makes it look like cellophane oh, um, yeah. when it does its damage um and they can just wreak havoc on our plants so definitely this is something that we might want to try to control and uh, products that you can use um, seven will work on this you can also use um, another product called cyflurin that's the actual insecticide name that's not the trade name of the product that you can buy there's several That'll different be in the product that's yeah. in the product that's okay. correct so um, they like warm sunny weather and so we've had plenty of that oh, for them to survive yeah. on this year. So, oh, yeah. so that's one pest that we're seeing again. Let's see. They look like that. Yes, Shannon, see. she is. And Kenny, that's exciting that you know her. Oh, nice. I know. <laughs> okay. Hi, Amber. How are you? So, yeah, this is little. Ooh, ooh. I guess I better go home and treat my roses. So do you treat the plants after you see the bugs or yes. do, you, um, do you just do them every year? Like what do you, what, well, so, you know, plan? we might go a year or two and, and they're not so bad, but okay. other years just, a lot of things are weather dependent. So, um, weather or will, flourish and, and, yes, yes, we will see more of them than, than other times. So, um, one other way that you can control these that I forgot to mention, if you don't want to use an insecticide is you can actually tap them off into a bucket of soapy water. Oh, okay. And then destroy them that way. Okay. So that's kind of a... So if you want to be out and spend time in your yeah. garden, then you can just plump yeah, them off. That's okay. right. That's, that's right. awesome. So, um, so that's a treat as necessary. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Um, you know, if they're just wreaking havoc on your stuff, I would definitely treat for them. Yeah. So, yeah. And there are several products here that... Harlequin um, bugs in the garden. Harlequin bugs. Um, how to get rid of harlequin bugs. So there are lots of different um, insecticides that she could use for that. Mm -hmm. um, definitely read the label and um, only apply a product that is labeled for the specific... Um, vegetable that you may be applying it to okay so all of all of these products have a specific label on the back that you can open and read to make sure that um, what you're applying is really what you're wanting to apply right and, that and something that you're like for example something that is for a garden not Correct. necessarily for something that you're not going to eat yes right? and so many times people come to me and they say well, Krista, I've got these bugs, and yet I applied a fungicide. Well, when you apply a fungicide to try to treat a bug problem, it's not, you're defeating it's not, the purpose. That's yeah. not the product that you need. So, or they say, you know, I go out and I diagnose, and they have a fungus, and they say, well, I've applied malathion. Well, that's an insecticide. That's not a fungicide. So you need to make sure that you're okay. using the right product. Okay. okay. So something for the garden that would 
be specific for a tomato plant or a cucumber plant or yes, something like that. Yes, right? and so it's important that they read the label, not just apply randomly. So, so lots of options, Amber. Yes. You have to come in and, and we can help you look on there specific to what you have the Harlequin bugs on. Okay, this next creature I have, I certainly hope he does not fly off at me, but um, this is the squash bug. So yeah. probably the number one problem that we have in the garden, and this is off of a, um, a squash plant. And if you look closely here, not only do we have the adult, but here are the babies. And oh. so that's what makes them so difficult to control is there's actually like two generations of squash bugs per year. So these adults lay eggs. The eggs are on the underneath side of the leaves. And so when we go out and look for them, a lot of times we don't see these little red dots. And so you just have another population and the cycle continues. Mm -hmm. So the squash bug actually uses its mouth, mouth part to pierce the leaf and they suck the juice out. So they can drain a plant of its natural juices very quickly. So super hard to control these guys. Um, but if you have them, you definitely want to get them under control. So okay. um, butternut, butternut squash and acorn squash are resistant. So that's two um, different varieties that you could plant that. Okay. So your standard like yellow, just yeah. yellow squash is going to have a lot of these. Yes. Um, and so what do you do? Pumpkins, cucumbers. Oh um, yes. yes. I forget those are squash. Yeah. So actually there's a couple of things you would want to do. Different products um, treat either the adult or they That's treat. That's just an in-store yeah. bug. <laughs> <laughs> or they treat what's known as the nymphs or the babies. Okay. And so the nymphs you would want to use spinosad. Okay. okay, and spinosad is most commonly sold in this particular product. Okay. And the name, Let's I just this. love the name of this. Captain, Captain Jack's yeah. Dead Bug Brew. Brew. <laughs> Dead Bug Brew. And it comes in, we have it in spray bottles that's already um, ready to go to, or a concentrate, and you can um, mix it up in your sprayer at home or whatever, but... Yeah, you said this is a good one to treat a lot of different it stuff. It is. It is. It's a really great product we use for a lot of different things. So, um, for the ad the adults, you're going to want to use a product called Cyflurin, um, and you will have to look. Um, that's the insecticide, but you'll have right. to look for it in the trade. Um, also, where did he go? I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that? That is a nymph yeah. right there. That is a little baby. I can, but squash bug crawling around right there at my thumbnail. So the adult, the freshly hatched, and the egg on the back. Oh yeah, so you do have a whole bunch of different stages. Yes, and that's why they're so hard to control. The eggs, you can actually walk out and if you find them, just squish them with your thumb and destroy them that way. Okay. So, yeah. So you'd have to check every leaf. Oh, that's, yes. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Farmer's market's looking better and better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Matt, go ahead. No, you're good. Okay. Um, I don't know that I can get this one out of the bag or that I want to get it out of the bag very much, but um, this is the cucumber beetle, and it can either be Ooh. spotted like this one or it can be striped. So oh, wow. here again, um, you're going to find these on squash and cantaloupe and pumpkins. Um, the biggest concern is not so much the feeding that they actually do on the plant, but they can transmit what, uh, bacterial disease called bacterial wilt from plant to plant. And once plant gets it, it wilts and dies. So, oh. um, you know, go ahead. No, that's sometimes you your plants die and you're like, what the heck? It yes. was fine, and <laughs> right. it just kills over, and you're like, yeah. And yeah. So maybe that's. And been my problem in the past. When I found these this morning, trust me, they were not hard to find. They were out and about in heavy populations. So, um, again, you can use something like a permethrin product. You can use a, a carbol or a seven, um, seven product. Yeah. And seven well, comes in a lot of different. Um, I mean, if I'm over here looking, but it's a whole bunch of different. I mean, there's ones that attach to your garden hose. There's um, 
you know, ones that you can mix in a concentrate, and there's usually powders and stuff too, right? You can yeah. put on a powder too. Yeah, so it comes exactly lots right. of different applications. Uh huh. Yeah, very good. Um, let's see. Okay, so somebody earlier uh, had a question about bagworms. Oh, yeah. And, bagworms. you know, nothing is uglier than a tree that is covered with bagworms. And so we're almost nearing the time that they're too large to treat. It's not going to do us any good. I have been telling people if you can get on it here in the next week or so, we need to treat. Um, as you can see, this one has attached itself and it's already devoured part of this bald cypress. Um, now, branch are bagworms just on this type of, of um, tree, or they come in all trees? Bagworms trees. really like evergreens and um, some of our shrubs and and different trees. This, ha like I said, this is a bald cypress, but um, they will attack when they're hungry just about anything. So they hatch um, mid or late May to mid June. There's a first hatch, then there's a secondary hatch, and then by that time. Um, they are surrounding themselves in this little silken cocoon that's really hard to, to get insecticide through, almost impossible. So not only um, treating them at the right time, I would have liked to have seen this bagworm treated, say, more like three weeks ago oh. um, than now. Um, so more about the start of summer. Yeah, because when they're smaller, they're easier to control. So, so now, like at wheat harvest, you need to remember yeah, wheat harvest yeah. is like the a time little, to treat yeah, the bagworms. Even I mean, a little bit later than that, mm -hmm. um, because soon after hatching, they wrap themselves in this little cocoon, and, and then they just go to town eating. So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, mm, bagworms. Yeah, I know. Now I know. do you? like when you spray them I mean like my trees are like you know they're big so do you have to get like a big sprayer and just yes just that's really one of the most important things you have to have good coverage you can't just you know on a shrub or something like that like, yeah, yeah you could maybe take a little hand sprayer mm -hmm. or if it's small enough just hand pick them off Oh, okay, but the trick yeah. there is don't just pick it off and throw it on the ground because they have the ability to crawl right back up and reattach. So if you do pick them off, put them in the trash and destroy them. Okay. But yes, um, this size you need to make sure that you've got good coverage going on um, yeah. with the insecticide. Right. And again, um, that spinosa product that we talked about earlier, that would be the one that I would recommend folks to probably use okay. um, to control that. You can use seven, you can use malathion. Um, but, but the spinosid. Spinosid, uh-huh. Okay, that's good. And so Shannon said, what about the black beetle looking bugs that burrow in the mulch? And they're in your flower bed, I see Shannon. Yes, so with that type of um, bug, I'm guessing it's a type of beetle that you have going on. Um, I would probably recommend either a, a seven product or maybe even a permethrin you can treat. Permethrin is a, a good kind of all-purpose insecticide that you can use in a lot of different places. Yeah. Yeah, I think we do a lot of permethrin uh -huh. just because it's easy. You know, it is. And all. Yeah. And I'll go around. And we do have some item, some stuff that is, um, oh, you know, tree huggish type. Uh, yeah. Or, or not organic or yes, safe organic. Right. Environmental, environmentally Mentally, friendly. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we do have some of that too. A black beetle. Yeah. I was, that's what I was telling her earlier. I have these, they're almost, they look like a bee. And if I didn't know that they weren't a bee, it would scare me, you know, scare <laughs> yeah. me because I don't love bees, but, yeah, yeah. and they fly all around and then they burrow in my dirt, and mm -hmm. so I don't, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Now, I do know, one of my questions was, every year, um, my friend Heather does so much better than me, she's always out um, spraying her trees with um, dormant, dormant oil. Is that something that you should do in the fall or winter okay. time? And we can talk about that later yeah. too, but... So dormant oil is something that we put on in the, uh, like the name implies, the dormant season. Mm -hmm. So this would be something that we would apply to our fruit trees to control scale and, and other things that may affect okay. them um, early in the season. And when I say early, I'm talking 
end of February, end of the first part of March. When it's cold outside, I know when I get my butt outside to do pretty it. Pretty much. Yeah. So when you're when you're bored and you've been inside all winter and you're like, I'm itching to get, get out outside. and do something. You can do dormant. Yeah, right? if it's a day above, you know, about 50 degrees, okay. you can do that. So, okay. Yeah. Any other tips for anything else um, that is, people have going on? Anybody have no. any other questions? If you have a question, post and we'll try and answer it. Yeah. Um, one thing that I would bring to your attention, I've not received a lot of calls on yet, but I have a feeling that that may ramp up here pretty quick. So this is a fall webworm. Oh. And, yeah, I you know, I get those. Yeah. In our area, they're fairly common. They get on our walnuts and our pecans. They can get on our ornamentals. Um, this happens to be a blue indigo ornamental kind of... Uh, bush and as you can see I can count one two three four five on here and they've been very destructive they make their webbing they consume the leaves and like I said I've not gotten a lot of calls about problems in trees but this would be something definitely put on your radar um, the good thing is it's more of a cosmetic damage that they cause it's not going to be a permanent kill the tree or kill the shrub so well that's good now yeah. is that like can you treat for that and help avoid it like with the dormant um, oil no, or anything like that or just, you just deal with it's it? yeah it's more once you see it um they're characterized they're actually kind of cool when you look at them closely so they're a pale green yellow but then they have these long white um hairs on them can you see that yeah yeah they're really they're really kind of cool i don't know that you all can see that um there's one right here but that's um, pretty neat. The only other thing I would say, I know that um, up here in the Chanute area, you guys have been fortunate to get some rain. Other parts of the county in the area have not. And so definitely some symptoms of drought stress are starting to show up. This is a sycamore tree, oh, which yes. are definitely trees that like a little more um, water than others. And so this tree really has defoliated quite severely just because it's been dry. Yeah, I've but, noticed that I've in my yard even. I've some of the leaves are starting to turn yellow and they're just falling off. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, they're getting thirsty. Yeah. 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 Moles in the yard. You have any good mole oh, tricks? Oh, you know, so what I recommend for moles is definitely trapping. Um, but the trick to trapping is you have to know which runs are active right. and which runs are not. So that takes a little bit of work and um, effort on your part to go out and, and stomp down the, the run today mm -hmm. and then go back tomorrow and see if it's mounted back up and then that's where you want to place your trap. Okay. So it's not just, you can't just randomly put them out there. You have to know. You can, you're just not going to catch it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And do you... Um, Oh, so my husband always says that you, to help with moles, you treat the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the grubs. grubs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So because they're there for that the food is a source, sign kind of that, like, um, what are the armadillos? Yeah. That is a sign that you do have some grub activity in your yard. And, uh, you know, now's the time to be thinking about putting down your grub treatment, um, definitely we start to see more damage later in the summer mm -hmm. so and we just sprinkle we just put in um there's we have some oh, yeah. different grub things that we just put in like a spreader um i think you can even rent them at the rental store if you don't own one and you just broadcast it over and then i think you water it in yeah. or it gets watered in or yeah. whatever That's if you right. do it before hopefully it rains and yeah. then um it helps with the grubs but jason has used another um i don't know if this is k-state approved or not but Jason ordered a little um, thing that goes in the end of a hole in the, the end of a hole and it's kind of like it's a sound wave it's like oh, yes. a, it's like uh -huh. a shotgun type thing but it's not it doesn't have a bullet it's it's a sound wave mm -hmm. that like gets them yeah. um, so if you have interest in something like that come in and talk to Jason about his um, how he has liked that or not liked it or whatever and he can tell you more about that product but I, we can order it we don't ha I don't think we have them here in stock but we can order them I think that David and Jason have both used them I was trying to look on the shelf to see but I don't I don't think we have them in store but yeah um, brown recluse spiders yes definitely there are some home defense um, products that you can use I wanted to look on this one 
this uh, indoor outdoor it is a permethrin product I would need to actually read the label to see if it's if brown, brown recluse, recluse is on here I think this is the one that we use at home for most of our bugs mm -hmm. and spiders I don't know I don't know if brown recluse is on there Christy I will I will read for you here in just a minute and look um, but this is what we do we just mix it up we have a sprayer just a little pump sprayer that's actually I have my own that goes in my garage um, and Jason keeps it mixed up and it says mom's bug killer and then I just can spray the exterior you know just around the garage around the house around whatever and then once it's dry it's safe for pets to be around or kids or whatever and so um, and that's something that I can even do myself and you guys know how much I love to have things that um, that even I can do myself that I don't have to wait for my husband to be there to do but um, I will look on here Christy and see if it says brown recluse brown recluse and I'll let you know but this is what we do for all of our other spiders and bugs and stuff so yeah in inside and just around the outside um, you know one thing I might mention here as we're nearing you know I hate to say back to school already but that, I know it, you back see that everywhere I know but that gets us to thinking you know falls closer and closer and so falls the time where it's ideal to make improvements to your lawn so be thinking about um, putting on a fertilizer application the first part of September especially if you have fescue lawns because they're starving by then so okay that's a little heads up and if you have any desire to do a fall garden well about the first of August is the time to get those fall be thinking about getting those fall vegetables in whether it's radish or spinach or you know some of that Pumpkins. Pumpkins were too already... late. You know, okay. by the first of July, we like to have our pumpkin seeds in so they're ready. I did not plant pumpkins, by yeah. the way, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I didn't make it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yards. Oh, yeah. Yard care. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Yeah. And My yard has already started turning yellow because it's hacked off. We haven't. Yeah. We don't have any rain. I know. It's so. been super dry. Yeah. So. And that's a great time to plant. I know we were, we just did some, um, poured some sidewalks, and so we have the strips down the side and that's we usually once it comes fall or even winter when it snows is when we plant our grass yes. and kind of try to fix our spots that's, and that's a great point because um, now is not the time because you're going to be out there every right day watering. well even spring because in the spring we can get grass to come up and get grass to grow but like just think about now how dry we've been and no mm -hmm. amount of water is going to keep those little um, tillers alive so we recommend always seed in the fall if you want it to put in a new lawn and seed it mm -hmm. do it in the fall because it has opportunity to to get up the little tillers get some roots going and then next year it can survive the summer much better right so yeah that's what we do and I know at the rental store we have um, that thing that pokes holes oh an aerator yeah, yeah an aerator and I and I know um, spreaders and different things like that so if you're looking to do extra stuff in your lawn for this fall then I know the, that equipment if you sometimes it's kind of like uh, cost prohibitive to buy yeah. that big stuff and I know we do have it over there for rent I don't know yeah. what the rental fee is but I, you can call over there 431 rent is the phone <laughs> number um, good and easy so anybody else have any other questions I know Chrissy I'll get back to you on that um, if you have any, if you think about anything else, post on the comments, and I think Crystal will be checking the. I will check the comments and everything. So, I um, and I guess I would like to remind people, you yeah. know, that um, the extension office services are free. Yes. So we are. Yeah, and they are awesome friends. They are just great. To call them. Thank you very much. Yeah, give us a call. We're here to help. I can make house calls out to look at um, what problems you may be having and. Uh, get you on the right track get you yeah. the right products or whatever the case might be and we keep these little notepads in here um, in our sections on our shelves and they have Chris's phone number and the office different offices and you guys have a lot more than just you have a lot of agents that are that do a lot of other things not we just we do not just yes. you I mean you have lots of little friends that yeah, do yeah there are all kinds um, of stuff. there are eight of eight agents now in the district so Woodson County joined us just recently, so yeah, we're that's excited awesome. about that. Yeah. yeah, and there's a if you're interested in gardening, you have a gardening class coming up, I right? I do. So yes, thank you for mentioning that. Oh no that. problem. Um, every other year, we're able to offer the um, Extension Master Gardener class. Yeah, here. which I've heard is awesome. It is, and uh, so it's coming to Chanute. It begins September the 10th and goes through October 15th every Monday 
from 9 to 4. Um, specialists from K-State will be the presenters and um, the cost is $85. I have about 25 active master gardeners doing projects across the district and so it's a great yeah. opportunity. Yeah, a lot really of fun. fun. If you enjoy that type of thing, it's yeah, there's a yeah. ton of information and knowledge. Yeah. And you guys do all sorts of other, I mean you do obviously the fairs coming up this week and so yes. you'll be highly involved there. But yes. um, give us some more examples of things that you guys do just so yeah. that they, because. I didn't, until I started doing some stuff here, I didn't realize that the extension office was yeah. there. So. Well, one big one that probably we get the most hits a certain time of year is the Medicare, like signing up for your different oh, yeah. Medicare, I hope I'm saying this right, Joy Miller is our agent, but um, when you have to make those decisions of to which plan, which one works best for you, she is a marketplace navigator, I believe is the correct uh -huh. terminology. So she can save you money and help you make some of those decisions. Um, we also do foods and nutrition. Um, we have an agent dedicated to livestock and uh, forage crop production, 4-H mm -hmm. um, of course. So yeah, you guys lots have of different areas. Stuff. We yeah, do, that's we do. Awesome. We, we, we are told all the time that we're the best kept secret and we're tired of being the best kept secret. We right. want people to utilize our service. Yeah, so. right. And that's part of one of those things, like, if you don't use those things, then they quit paying for them and they quit right. having them. And so right, right. Um, when it's a benefit and people love it, then it's like, oh, we better keep that going. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, if you come up with anything else for your yard or garden, um, holler and post on there. And I think Chris will be checking the comments, and so will I. And make sure that we um, post back to you. I don't know very much, but she does, and so we'll be using her help. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a great week, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.